Today, we're having a channel takeover with Dr. Kish. Hello, YouTubers. My name is Kishan. I'm one of the doctors at The Lovely Clinic, and I work with Sarah Tonks, who I'm sure you're familiar with. I'm here today with Vicky, who is interested in some treatments for rejuvenating her face. And we're just going to talk through some of her goals, some of her objectives, about what she's trying to achieve. So over, over to you, Vicky. Um, can I ask you, why are you here today? Um, well, I think since kind of getting a bit older and starting to feel um, like time is catching up on my face a little bit, um, okay. I was just interested in trying to maintain, really, um, trying to, you know, capture some of the youth back and um, make myself feel, you know, like it's uh, like it's not a battle that I'm losing. OK, well, we've met before and uh, I have to say, Vicky, you look great. I do know your age and I think, um, you know, whatever tweakments we're going to do, I think they're just going to enhance um, and perhaps give you a little bit of a refreshment. I don't think there's a lot we need to do. Um, but we will talk through some of your sort of bugbears, some of your areas that you want to improve. So um, with that in mind, um, should we get the pictures sure. and we'll have a little look Let's through them. them. If you perhaps take the iPad mm -hmm. and there's your pen and if you highlight um, your sort of maybe four or five things that, you, that bother you okay. and we can take it from there. Okay, well I think initially um, probably highest on the priority is just the areas under here um oh, sorry is that not uh, there we go there we go so um the areas under here which everybody knows get a little bit a bit dry a bit crepey a bit liney okay. um i think that would be a, a really good thing to try and um to try and improve also there's I've, I've noticed just a just a sort of not not lines exactly but just kind of starting to feel a bit heavier here gosh I'm going to make a really nice picture mm -hmm. of myself here uh, and along and along here so sort of just trying to you know open the face up again um, because I guess gravity pulls it down um, there's also some areas here I suppose there's sun damage hyperpigmentation um, be lovely if I could try and you know get that blank canvas back again where you're all this all kind of a nice um even uh, complexion all over um and i think yeah maybe a little bit of volume sort of disappears from here as you get older as well um i think those will probably be the main um the main areas that that, that probably i i feel like okay and because the out. face is never sort of just uh, straight on it's always in different angles and um, let's have a look at other other mm -hmm. views of you as well so well we can see here we've got all these the lines around here um, which would be nice if that was kind of slightly smoothed okay. out not quite so liney um, I mean I mean there's sort of areas here that look quite shadowy um, that that would that's probably another another area that could that that would be nice to sort of okay. have it opened up a little bit you know yeah I think you, you can see here a little bit more when <clears throat> we're talking about this this whole area mm -hmm. here kind of you know falling <laughs> falling inwards on itself um, you know you've got a bit of a shadow there um, you know you lose the tight, yeah. you lose the kind of tight um jawline effect there as well as everything's sort of fall, falling a bit more forward so it'll be nice to i think rather than out. sort of separating things out and and um going through what i'm going to do separately for you but i think i'll just start off here i mean i think that for me is a really good thing that you've that you've pointed out because the definition of mm -hmm. the jawline is something i'd probably want to target um, as well as all the other areas you've mentioned, like the, the under eye area, the loss of volume just by the side of the nose mm -hmm. and the cheeks as well. And we can do that with some really small amounts of filler placed at specific points in the face, which are the first signs of aging mm -hmm. or where we where we lose volume first. And from there, you should get a decent sort of uplifting of the facial features, um, something more to what you're, what mm -hmm. you're looking for. So certainly you've had some treatment here, I think, before, mm -hmm. and you're in the process of having this dissolved out because yeah. there is some filler there, which I think is drawing water into the area. Mm -hmm. And there's a few different approaches we could use for the skin underneath the eye. 
and because it is the thinnest the thinnest skin in the body and it does exhibit those lines and wrinkles a lot mm -hmm. a lot quicker than anywhere else on the face um, particularly because there's so much sun exposure mm -hmm. and there's a lot of activity of the muscle underneath wrinkling and creasing the skin on a on a daily basis so I think what we could try is some very very fine filler called a skin booster directly into those wrinkles and just underneath the skin there to form a thin sheet of support um, for the eye area and we'll do that I think perhaps um, after we've done some treatment with PRP so as you know PRP we discussed this mm -hmm. as well and it's using your own growth factors to almost build the skin and to encourage cellular re regeneration. So it's really cutting edge medicine, it's regenerative medicine at its best, and we'll bring you back, draw some blood from your arm and isolate the growth factors and then inject that back into the skin of the, of the face, mm -hmm. probably sort of all over the face as well as just the eye area. Um, and then once the skin is healed a little bit, we will put in that fine layer of filler underneath. And I think that will give the best support for the area there. Um, the jawline we mentioned, and I think I'd probably try some filler in this area to give you slightly more strength in the jaw and also build um, some definition along the jawline here as well. Um, and then there's always some room for posterior support along the cheek. So we can try some sort of firmer, more lifting filler at the back there. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly you mentioned the sort of the creases around the eyes. I mean, that's really quite straightforward. We can do that as soon as we can do that with a little bit of botulinum toxin and that should smooth the area out for you quite nicely. Finally, we did mention that you've got some areas of hyperpigmentation and you can see the sort of, yeah, as, just as you said, there's some sun damage here and there. And I might targ that, target that with a pigmentation peel, mm -hmm. something that will give you quite a lot of downtime. By that, I mean you'll be flaking quite a lot. You'll have to use some pretty targeted skincare um, and you probably have to avoid work and social events for about two weeks. But the, the upside of it is that your skin becomes a lot clearer. Your complexion becomes like a smooth canvas mm -hmm. and any treatments you have after that are are going to look a lot more natural, a lot more enhanced with that complexion being so good. The one thing I noticed as well was that around the mouth, we've got some filler, and this is much more evident in real life, is that we have some filler product, which I think is around the border of the lip. Mm -hmm. Now, the product you mentioned to me is something that I don't actually use very often. And when I have tried to dissolve it out, um, I've had some problems. So mm -hmm. it does seem to have a history of causing problems around the mouth area. Mm -hmm. So I think best is we just leave that well alone and we hopefully let nature take care of that. In the, in the passing of time, mm -hmm. it should dissolve um, and hopefully we'll get your lip contour back and we can always address that in the future. So I think in summary, I'd probably start with a little bit of um, skin retexturizing and uh, regeneration with PRP around the eye area, some Botox as well, and then some judicious amounts of filler in the key areas of facial aging so here as well, I completely forgot to mention, um, to bring back a little bit of lift and a little bit of definition to your face. We're not talking a lot of treatment, but just small amounts placed in very, very specific areas for that lift. So Vicky, so that's my sort of idea about what we're going to do. Do you have any concerns, any ideas, any, any sort of questions about treatment? Um, no, I think it's initially it would just be regarding the downtime, but as you've said, um, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks, so... Um, you know, it's, it's possible I can do that. And I suppose with things like um, protecting my um, skin from the sun during those times, staying out of the sun um, would, I assume, be something that I would definitely need, need to be doing. I think in general it's quite a good idea to yeah. try and stay out of the sun mm -hmm. so that you don't develop pigmentation or mm -hmm. dispigmentation. Um, but particularly after any injectable treatments, there is a little bit more risk of hyperpigmentation. So. Um, you should avoid the sun. You should uh, use an SPF 50 every day anyway. Um, and if you're having, if we do decide to do the pigmentation peel, then you are definitely going to have to stay out of the sun because yeah. it, will, it will irritate and it will leave your skin more vulnerable mm -hmm. than if you haven't had the treatment done. Sure. So, um, yeah, that's, and there's other precautions such as you, you should really avoid sauna and steam rooms mm -hmm. for two weeks after treatment. You want to avoid rubbing your face excessively and moving product around potentially. 
Also, you want to um, what's the, you want to avoid exercise for one day after treatments. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's fairly it's fairly smooth sailing. So okay, so we made our little plan. Let's see what we did. We started off targeting her main area, which was the eyes, and we used um, a slightly more viscous product called Redensity 2, and this actually has a little bit of light reflecting properties. So then we used uh, a very small amount of this product here, about 0.3 millilitres, and in a very sort of a deep injection to make good that slight depression that was underneath the eye. Following this, I used a tiny amount of Restylane Vital Light, which is a super, super light skin boosting product. And I used this just underneath the skin with a cannula, as you can see here, um, for even more light reflecting properties and to smooth out the skin in this area. Finally, in both eyes, I used Redensity One, which is a injectable moisturizer, and it's particularly suited to the under eye area. Um, and it provides glutathione, alpha lipoic acid um, and other antioxidants to make this under eye area pop a little. It tends to give a little bit, bit of brightness as well. So I used about 0.5 millilitres each side. Next you can see here that I used Define, which is another product in the Restylane family. Um, and I used this to lift out the temples because in the in the before fit photos, we noticed that there was a little bit of temporal hollowing um, and this lifted out really nicely with a small amount. In fact, I used 0.5 millilitres each side of the Define product to create a more sort of a more softer look. Then we moved on to the cheeks and we used a very, very viscous product called Restylane Lift. And again, I used half a syringe each side with a deep bolus technique to give some support. Something akin to having pillars underneath the house to lift out the area and really give um, a good cheek contour. To give more augmentation in this area, I used a top model look technique. And for this, I used the Define product again, using half a syringe each side with a cannula to give more of a, uh, a defined contoured look in the cheek area. And working down the face, we started using um, a softer products around the mouth um, using Ultra 4 from Juvederm, using about half a syringe each side to lift this shadow out and to give a smoother appearance overall. So Vicky was talking about how she, her face was sagging a little bit and she didn't like the appearance of the early jowl. So we used Volux here, which is the latest product from Juvederm. And we used about half a syringe each side to give definition to the angle of the jaw. And that actually gave a very soft but natural sort of lifting effect to minimize the appearance of the jowl. Finally, I had Vital Light, um, plenty of Vital Light left over to use to support the skin of the cheek and to soften some of the finer wrinkles that you could see. So I used a cannula approach here, just underlying the, the skin of the lateral cheeks. Finally, because she was such a great patient and, and despite having all these treatments done, we finished off with Profilo, which is the injectable moisturizer, using five injections of 0.2 millilitres in specific bio-aesthetic points in the face to give up to three months of hydration and a little bit of collagen regeneration as well. So let's just see what happened and what the results looked like. I mean, uh, if we just have a quick look at this, and uh, that's a fantastic picture. You'd want to frame that, wouldn't you? I'd like to find somewhere to put that, yeah. I mean, <laughs> very regal. I mean, it could be on a coin. I love it, actually. I don't know, it's, it's one of my favourite pictures out of your, out of your series. Uh, it, is a, it is a good picture. Mm. Yeah, I'll give you mm. that. I'll give you that. So, um, so we're back with Vicky, who's one of our favourite patients at the Lovely Clinic. And I have to say, it was, it was a pleasure to treat Vicky. Um, she's going to probably tell us completely different, but uh, there was... It was, it was a dream because she was so patient, she was so um, still throughout the treatment. Sometimes it is like doing a little bit of artwork when we're working with injectable treatments. And if you imagine that your paper is moving around, it becomes all that much harder to get the result for the patient. And that's why some people, you know, I might actually split the treatment up into two, three, sometimes even four stages, just so that it becomes a bit more to tolerable for our patient. But Vicky, 
I mean, you know, Trooper doesn't really cover that description. <laughs> she sailed through it. And I think there was only a couple of times where she mentioned a little bit of discomfort. Um, but she, you made the procedure really easy for me, I have to say. So for our, for our viewers out there, yeah. I'd like to find out from you how it was to have about 11 mils of product injected into your face. Well, I, I actually, I mean, I was going to say it was, it's, it was slightly uncomfortable. It, it wasn't really even slightly uncomfortable. It was just... You know, I, I guess for the amount of time and just having your face being worked on was sort of, you know, it, it, it just really wasn't, it wasn't painful. I guess towards the end, maybe when the, um, uh, the numbing uh, cream starts wearing mm. off, it's slightly more stingy, but really not anything that I would say was actually painful. Mm. Not at all. And I made you look quite silly beforehand, didn't I? I gave you a full sort of white oh, frosting yeah. on your face with <laughs> yes. some cling film. Yeah, I remember and that. And yeah. the idea was to really, really allow the anaesthetic mm. cream to penetrate and she looked ridiculous for an hour. But I think it worked for <laughs> you, But it worked, you, yeah. Right? It definitely did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So you got iced. Um, <laughs> okay, and so during the treatment, you were great and you, you're saying to us that it wasn't that painful. However, obviously, you know, individual results may vary. And uh, some people might find that the treatment's a little bit more uncomfortable, mm. but I think that's something that we can we can we can adjust for uh, in consultation, and we can we can certainly split things up. Um, the next big question, and from personal experience, I will say that after treatment, it can be quite painful. I, I actually woke up um, a little bit uncomfortable after having quite a lot of filler treatment in my face. How was it for you? I mean, in um, the after it. Well, I was expecting that I would have a lot of bruising under my eyes because obviously that's quite thin skin and it's quite delicate. Um, but I, I didn't have any at all. Um, I didn't I didn't really have any bruising um, either. Slight slight bruising just along uh, just along the cheekbone there, but nothing that I couldn't cover with with okay. makeup. Um, and then I think the days after probably slightly sore in the temples where that went in because I suppose that's you know when you're chewing and you're talking yeah. and you're eating so and just here I think yeah. I sort of mentioned do you remember I said to you after try not to eat anything too chewy mm -hmm. no steaks no yep. baguettes nothing like that there's actually a chewing muscle that that basically meets your jawbone here and it fans out and it sort of comes out and it ends up in the temporal bone here and when we inject through that which you can't avoid doing in this treatment um, you can make that muscle quite sore mm. and chewing afterwards can be a problem as well. Mm. So it's usually recommended that you have a soft diet yeah. um, for a few days afterwards. But that was a sore area. And I remember at the time you, mm. you said it was a bit sore. Um, anything else? Um, um, I, as I said, there was no bruising under my eyes, but there was... Um, I, I could see where the product had gone in, as you had already told me, that it would sort of almost pull a little bit create a bit of a bag before it kind of disperses under the skin. So I did see that for a few days. Um, but again, I think that was kind of things that I noticed on myself very, very close up. I yeah. don't really think it would be anything that anybody else would have would have seen um, from, you know, my day to day life. Um, it's quite funny, isn't it? Because once you have one of these enhancement procedures, you become so much more critical and mm. you begin to pay so much more interest yeah. in, in the mirror. <laughs> So yeah, it's just one of the things we see. There wasn't much downtime for you. There wasn't much pain for you. No. And you were a great patient. Um, I suppose now is a time when you might want to look at some of your other pictures and mm -hmm. see what you think has improved for you. Because you are obviously the best judge of your face. So mm -hmm. I'll hand the iPad to you. Okay. And I know where things have gone. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely here. <clears throat> I feel it's less um, hollow looking mm -hmm. um, and obviously under my eyes here and here and less so on that side but certainly on this eye mm. was sort of filled in a lot at this at this point and at that point um, here as I was saying the bit that was a bit sore sort of at the, at the temples here doesn't seem to go in like um, like it was doing yeah. before um, and I think also the the jawline here being stronger which has also lifted here mm. and um, and here from the filler that was put in there. Yeah. So, but I think I, I think I think the jawline is quite um, 
has kind of had a nice effect at the bottom half yeah. of, of the face, for sure. So, and for me, I think, um, mm. I'll tell you what I like. Mm. Uh, I like, I like the, that it looks a little bit more lifted. And I think mm. one of your key issues with it was that your face was exhibiting a little bit of sagging. Um, and I think that's, even when you're not smiling, your face just seems a little bit more lifted. Mm. So certainly it's sort of that area there and that area there, as you've not noticed as well. Here there's less of a shadow mm -hmm. than there was before. Um, I think we've we've still got a little bit of way to go with the eye area. And mm. I'd, I'd probably suggest we do a little bit more in the coming months, just a little bit underneath the eye there to support that skin. Um, and then we'll get a lot more equality. Um, I really like, in general, I think you're just, with the, with the added volume, mm. Your face just looks a bit healthier, mm. like um, like you're eating well mm. and uh, <laughs> eating healthily, and uh, yeah, you just look a lot, just a little bit more fresh. Mm. Definitely. So I suppose this isn't the end of our journey uh, with you, and um, because there were certain things that you wanted us to address when you came for your first consult with me, mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned sort of pigmentation. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some. Brown spots, which are quite cute when you're younger, you know, the freckles, <laughs> angel's kisses, whatever you want to call them, but they're basically sun damage. Mm. And we've got a new treatment at the lovely clinic, which is going to really help eradicate those brown spots and leave your complexion looking a lot sort of more clean, a lot yeah. sort of um, a lot more smooth and luminous. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also talked just now about um, a little bit more product in the medial tear trough and the lateral tear trough. And I think that will complete our journey with the eye and the, what they call the periorbital complex. Mm -hmm. So it just, it will make your eye give, give, the, give the correct support in that area. Um, and finally, I wanted to ask you about the lip because when we first met, we noticed there was some product and a little bit, bit of blue discoloration above the lip. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the lip, right. because this will tell us where we want to go in the future. Okay. Um, well, over the years, um, wh when I was younger, I, I had, um, um, I think I, I fell and I had a bit of a an accident where my lip was split open, um, which I believe is this sort of area. Okay. Um, so I have quite a bit of scar tissue there. Um, since then, when I was a bit older, I had um, lip fillers. Um, and unfortunately, I got um, I got some infections and some. I just had some very bad reactions, which is um, where I think this uh, up here, which I think is scar tissue, mm. um, I I had to have it dissolved and drained and all sorts of problems with it. So it's sort of left my lips quite uneven, quite bumpy, mm -hmm. um, which is what why I'm trying to. So I I, I had a um, it, it sort of made the. The line also here, um, not that I've drawn that very mm. straight, but it's made the uh, definition a bit wobbly as well. So um, I have actually had like a, a lip tattoo in a, in a very light blush colour to try and even that mm. out. Um, but definitely I would like to look at trying to fix that um, if, if possible. I yeah. know sometimes scar tissue is a bit, a bit difficult, but I do think there is some undissolved product in there as well. Mm. Um, so that would definitely be something that I'd be interested in doing in the future. I mean, they're not bad. And I think even sitting close to, you know, they, they don't look bad at all. But there's just some product outside mm -hmm. of the lip margin, which yeah. I think if we just flatten that out and then see where we are. Yeah. We can try a softer product um, just to gently, softly round, round your lips out and create a bit of definition. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely something we can do. Um, when it comes to pigmentation... Mm. What type of treatment do you think you'd be able to tolerate? Because there's one that that has a fair bit of downtime, mm. and it means peeling, and it means mm. a little bit of social exclusion. Mm. I've had it, and mm. you don't feel like leaving the house. <laughs> um, and then there's a more gradual sort of a daily skincare program, mm. which I've had two rounds of as well, mm. um, and that clears pigmentation, but it's probably not as a dramatic yeah. um, result. Um, I think in terms of downtime, probably I'd probably I'd go for the more gradual. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess it all depends on timing, doesn't it? If you know mm -hmm. you're having something done, you can sort of arrange your life a little bit yeah. to kind of. Um, but a gradual one will probably sound slightly more attractive, yeah. <laughs> I think. Because um, you remind us, you're you're starting studies soon, yes, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, in September. Right. So I will be. 
well, I don't actually know what what I'll be doing yet. Mm. I'll, I, but I, but I need to be flexible with Could it. Could be partying with all the students. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I, I would need to be flexible, and obviously, a lot of downtime and a lot of time away from that is is not going to be possible right, for okay. me. So, um, so yeah, maybe something gradual uh, would be a good thing. But yeah, like you say, you do notice it. It's sort of what used to be freckles then sort of start growing slightly and yeah. become a bit more blotchy. Yeah. But I think you'll see that that will get a lot better. So in my experience, when you've had a really good foundational treatment like this with, with multiple syringes of, of filler treatment and support in the in pan facial uh, approach, it's a really good idea to try and maintain this. Um, and you can do that by coming maybe once or twice a year and having a lesser amount of product put in at the key areas um, of the face which show facial aging first mm -hmm. and that way you'll keep your result you won't need as much mm. um, product um, and it's it's this treatment's really about pressing pause on the aging process because we can't make you look 20 years younger we're not going to do that we're just going to give you the most enhanced appearance for your age and it's going to be age appropriate it's going to be you know, life appropriate. You, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't look natural if you didn't have any wrinkles mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it's some of those areas of aging that you sort of picked up on the beginning, they'll still be there, but albeit much, much lesser and much, much less obvious. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what you're after when you get to, you know, past sort of a certain age. Is you don't really want to rewind it. You just want to kind of <laughs> just slow, slow it down, it down slightly. Yeah. That's I have it. to see you look. You look great, and you look really healthy, which is which is what we wanted to achieve for you, isn't it? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I'm really happy. Happy with great. it. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions or comments, please write them down in the comment section below. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with some more interesting treatments. Until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.